was early November of 2007. It was on a Friday night. I remember it being unseasonably warm that night. I was hanging out with my two friends, Irene and Dennis. hanging out, outside my truck, right by the white sand First Nations office. Irene was there to get some type of paperwork for tribal scholarships. Our other friend Dennis was going to meet us there, and we were going to go into town. As we're talking, we hear two footsteps and a twig break. We think that it's our friend Dennis. We turn to our left and see that it's one of the elders in the tribe. He was kind of a funny guy, a little strange. His name was Robert, and everyone knew him around the tribe. The thing that people remember most about him was his laugh. (laughs) I remember people used to say, if you're ever lost at one of the powwows, just use his laugh as a compass. He was a pretty religious man. Most of the people in our tribe are Catholic, and they also believe in the traditional ways. He was studying to become a medicine man. It was a little surprising seeing him out here, but we were right next to tribal office, and he would always do something with tribal council. What are you doing here? I was hoping he would move on. I didn't feel like talking to him. Every single time he sees me, He always stops by and talks. He always calls me Ningosis, which is Ojibwe for son. You guys catching the Wendago? When I was around your age, that's when I saw it. He tells us the story of what the Wendago was. He said that when he was in his 20s, he was hunting with his brother. He got misplaced in the woods and found himself in an area that he had no idea where he was at. He looks ahead of the trail and sees a tall, skinny, gray-skinned, big nose, sharp yellow teeth person standing in his way. He said it was making sounds like it was trying to throw up. It screamed and made a dash towards him. He looked down to get his rifle to put it up. As he looked up, it was gone. It started to immediately snow after that. He cuts the story off and leaves in the direction that he came. I thought it was kind of odd, but maybe he saw two people in the field and decided to investigate it. We remained there for 15 minutes more, waiting for our friend About 60 to 70 feet in front of us is a lake. We hear splashing. At first we think that it's frogs, but all the singing from the frogs have stopped. I look over and I see that someone is crouching down on the bed of the lake, thinking that it's our friend that we've been waiting for. I throw the beer bottle in the lake right in front of this figure. The splash of the bottle doesn't surprise this thing. It slowly tilts its head up to look at the bottle, and then turns to the left and looks at us. This thing's face was very skinny, almost like a zombie. It stands up and faces us. It was making a huffing sound 
Like it was out of breath, I stared into the thing's eyes. The eyes were milky white. I could see part of the iris in them. It screams and takes a couple steps forward. We quickly get inside my truck. As we get inside and lock the doors, this thing stops, 20 feet away, and stares. Its mouth was open, and its tongue was out. I turn on my truck and speed off. I found it strange as how Robert was here at the same time this thing showed up. I thought that maybe Robert was playing a joke on us. I still don't know what happened to this day. I always thought that the Wendigo was a metaphor for survival during the winter. That certain tribes were more humane than others because they didn't resort to cannibalism. Or maybe it's based on some truth.